episode 51 of the SND Podcast Show on the Schmuck Sports Network. That was Division 1.1 with we Through It All. Dan, how you doing tonight? Great. How's it going? Can't it's complain. Basketball season. Basketball season finally went on the way. Thank you for everybody that's checked out our NBA special that we had last week. Yes, thank you to Alex and Keith. Thank both you for them. both of them. And also co- Rob for the music for last of week. Of course, we can't forget about that. Very, very nicely done by Rob. Um, also, episode 50 went pretty well. Thanks again to Adam Rank for coming on talk a little bit of football. Yeah, we had him on for a long time, and it was worth every minute of it. So It's I, not just football that we talk about. We talk about everything with when it comes to Adam Rank. And so. yes, we will have our team. Impact hour with him. Yeah, you you can enjoy that <laughs> one. Uh, anyway, no that 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 was a great show. Yeah, both shows were great. We we put in a lot of midnight oil on that. I know you did. Um, oh yeah. So, <laughs> so um anyway, this week is uh, another fun pack week. Uh, this week we're gonna have Andrew. AJ. AJ Andrew, same thing. I'm sorry. From Blue Line Station. Station, not uh, yep. station. 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 I gotta get it right. Blue line way. station. Yeah, uh, that's why I had you do it. Anyway, uh, he's gonna come on. Uh, last night It'll we had the on. first installment of the on the Ranger game. Uh, the last now, one till December. Last one till December. The only one at National Coliseum. It was a very good game. So we're. G- I can't wait to get his take from it. Other than all I heard from Cry Baby Islander fans of what happened last night. So it's going to be nice to hear his take on things. Other than my girlfriend ragging on me. Uh, what else is going on? Giants are a bye week, but we have a lot yeah. of fun. Yay! <laughs> we we're on a two game winning streak. So there's uh. And some good news out of them. We'll talk about that yes, later. Yes. The two good news information share for everybody about the Giants. Jets, Jets can it get worse? Uh, no, no. Playing the Saints, can it get worse? Oh, well, We'll discuss this that week, later, though. This week, yeah. We will discuss that later, but right now we're going to go play some more Through It All by Division 1.1. <laughs> Welcome back to the S&D Podcast. You just listened to uh, Division 1.1 through it all. That's this week's song. We're going to start off the show tonight with the little New York football giants, Stephen. We're on a two-game winning streak going into the bye. A very ugly win, but a win's a win. Two ugly wins in a row. Doesn't matter how you win. It could be 2 nothing. I'll take the rest win. of the season. I'll lose ugly the rest of the season if they want to, for all I care. You mean win ugly. Yeah, you know what I mean. Win um, ugly the rest of the season. There are some things that the Giants need to fix. Um, getting into the end zone is one of them. That was <laughs> we haven't seen. There's the Giants. a big, big boulder wall. Not not a yeah. brick wall. A huge boulder yeah. wall. Um, finally, Josh Brown finally ha- stepped up and had a good game. Uh, he actually has had a quiet season. Um, he actually hit five field goals this week. So <laughs> it's who would have thought? It's all good for them. The Giants defense, eleven straight quarters of not giving up a touchdown. So that's. A touch, yeah, touchdown and overall points. So that's that's pretty amazing, especially how everybody's hated, uh, hated on the Giants' defense this season. Speaking so speaking of, congratulations to Terrell Thomas, Terrell defensive Thomas. player of the week. For congratulations the for having eleven tackles, one sack, and forced fumble. So he really played really awesome, which is great to see. Especially he did lead the Giants in tackles for two years in a row before he got hurt the first time. Yeah, and. That's what's scary is that he he is a pro he was a Pro Bowl caliber t- uh, DB before he got hurt. So hopefully him sharing it sh- uh, sharing up the DB secondary with uh, Prince of Ukamara, uh, Mukamara that, that maybe helps us out with the uh, rest of the defense. Of course, Beeson was a beast again. Um, he's he's really starting to uh, take over the leadership role on the Giants. He's defense. doing a lot of what Chase Blackburn did. Yeah, it may even better. A lot of people. Well, yeah, of course. A lot of people know. were saying, "How? How? Why do we want him?" Because Chase beat him out. Honestly, he Chase made it beat him out, but as he of beat outside, him out because the guy was injured. That news an outside. He's the the position was an outside linebacker. Chris Luke Keekley is better than both of them put together. Um, if middle linebacker. Oh, spot. no question about it. So that that's what happened. He, his natural position is middle linebacker. He got hurt two years in a row, so they, the Panthers were like, "All right, he's expendable since we're not using him at his." Uh, when do we give up a five? Exactly. So honestly, it's a great move. He's he's stepping it up. He's just playing all over the place. The Giants. He have to give up fifth round picks for linebackers. Yeah, and then that for Rivers also. Yeah, but easily. I mean, 
Beeson's a lot better than uh, than Rivers, in my opinion. Oh yeah. The, the Giants' defense did play well, unfortunately. Oh, well, luckily, the Giants uh, they had to face Matt Barkley after uh, Vince... Um, Couldn't blame him for that. But Michael Vick f- re-hurt his hamstring. So the Giants played really well. They contained... The only Trump eagle Trump. touchdown, by the way, was a screw-up by Diassi with a yeah, bad snap. exactly. But the, Gi- the Giants, uh, their D played well. They contained McCoy, especially since Barkley is the quarterback. The triple o- the option plays were definitely on a new low, since they know Bar- Barkley. Um, Matt Barkley's Matt Barkley's not going to be running. So, the Giants really? game. I thought he the was. Giants game plan really got cut down, which was awesome for the Giants to see. I'll tell you what, when Barkley went in, I wasn't like worried about it, and then he started marching him down the field. Yeah, a little bit, but after and then, then the fumble <laughs> happened, and then the game was like, all right, you're Matt Barkley, you're still not ready. Kind of thing. Yeah. So there's a reason you fell. We ha- we had the Giants felt like the Giants were gonna win the whole game, kind of thing. Once Vic got hurt, so that was a good solid team victory. They're two and six going into the bye week. A lot of things to work on. By the way, finally having positive. I got some positives for you right now. Coming off the first half. Okay. Uh, starting with the game and the Chiefs. I'm gonna start with. Okay. Wild Charles, 65 yards. Following week. This is number one running backs only, by the way. Yeah. Okay? I'm only giving you number one running backs. The following week, we host the Eagles. McCoy, 46 yards. The following Thursday night in Chicago, Forte, 67 yards. Yeah, he had a decent day out of the backfield catching, but I'm talking about rushing. Adrian Peterson, two weeks ago, I think it was 28 yards out of the backfield. Yeah. 13 carries, 28 yards. Last week, McCoy was 15 for 48. The, our run defense has been there a whole entire season, and a lot of people have been complaining about it. Honestly, that's one of the few areas, that's bright the spots. That's the best area we've we, been. And ever since we got Beeson to shore it up on the middle linebacker side, it's been a very refreshing to see the Giants swarming to the ball and playing New York Giants football that we know and love, especially with linebackers. We haven't had that since AP. As much as we all like uh, Blackburn, Blackburn wasn't the greatest. Let's be fair. He knew where to get players, but he he couldn't sometimes make the play physically. Right. Um. With Beeson, we he can do both, and that's what we've missed since a- Antonio Pierce. So that's great to see. Hopefully, he loves it here enough that we resign him in the off season, which I I could see we will. Another giant on defense that played really well, well especially in the first two series, was Antrell Roll. Where Trell at? Where Trell at? He had the interception. And the first drive, and then the second like drive, he had the strip. He had the strip sack. <laughs> no, that was Terrell Thomas. No, listen, he he strip sacked Vic, but his head was on the helmet, and he didn't know the, where the ball was at. Uh, Vic and Vic, uh, Vic fell on it. So Terrell Thomas, I mean Terrell Thomas and Antrell both played solid games. Prince, once again, Prince played pretty solid as well. Um, he's becoming a good shutdown corner. Granted, stats don't say that, but I think he is. He's very quiet and very underrated when that it comes to that. So, with the Giants, with that being said, they they have the bye week, so everybody needs to get healthy. Uh, Peyton Hillis played great. Well, not great. He played good and serviceable. He played Peyton We're, Hillis. The football. Giants are the Giants are really starting to start running the ball a little bit more, be, making defenses more honest, so they're a- actually able to establish the passing game that everybody knows and loves. So that that was an, another thing I like to mention in the game. Last week's game was the first time all season that the Giants were really able to establish long playing, uh, substanding long drives. drives. Granted, we didn't score any touchdowns, but th- that was a positive thing, and I I really like to see that us doing that Finish. more often. Yeah, we, ten play drives, which was very clutch for the Giants. We haven't seen them do that all season. It's just them gonna have to find a way to score touchdowns, um, which they they will. Last week was just one of those boring. They were just not finding a way to score touchdowns. Thank God the uh, opponent was lesser than us. Next a couple weeks against the Raiders at home, that should be fun. So, But we're, we'll talk more about that next week. We want to switch gears with the New York Football Jets. As long as you don't call them the New York Football Jets again. New York Football Jets? <laughs> uh, you know, we replayed that first ever show and you called them that and I yelled at you that night too. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> Say. Uh, the Jets uh, didn't show up on Sunday. They stayed in Fordham. Yeah, they 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 stayed there and just I don't know. It, it, they just had an ugly week. 
the Jekyll and Hyde season of up and downs have continued for the Jets. The one week they look awesome, the next week they look like a Pee Wee football team. Fortunately, this week was the Pee Wee football team version of the New York Jets. So it's not like the schedule gets any easier this week. Yeah, it's it's even harder this week. Thank God they're home, but they're playing the New Orleans Saints, who are leading the division right now in the NFC so. South. So it's going to be a test. Their defense is going to be up to the challenge because it's going to be a real crazy one. It's yeah. Going be, it's going to be a crazy one. Rex is a, the Saints coach now. I mean, uh, Rob. Rob. So it's going to be a... R- Rob uh, goes every year where Rex is playing against. Yeah, Haven't you figured that out yet? Feel, it seems like that. <laughs> uh, it, honestly, it's going to be interesting to see how the Saints should destroy the Jets with their offense alone. It, but the Jets defense can show up. Like we said, they show up every other week. Uh, they just got destroyed. Who was the wide receiver that scored four touchdowns? Marvin Jones. Marvin Jones. Okay, that's my point exactly. Unless you have know him for fantasy purposes, you you had no idea who he was. 122 yards and four, four touchdowns. touchdowns. That's, that's unheard of. Uh, A.J. Green had three receptions for 115 yards. Matt Sims even got some playing time. Matt that's Sims how bad of a game it was. Matt Sims led the team in rushing. Matt Sims led the team in rushing? Yikes. He did. <laughs> so you know Yikes. you're having a rough day uh, when that happens. The Jets just have that have another week, another mulligan with the loss. Um, I'm kind of disappointed because after how good they played against the Patriots, I thought the Jets were going to be able to play decently. Well, that's why they were your surprise of the week. Against the Bengals. Am um, I really wrong about the Bengals are finally waking up from what? All right. After watching the Bengals-Jets. Do you change your perspective? I know you were always the. I'm I, not I, ready to like the Bengals. I like yet. the Bang. I um. I'd let, let's get this one thing straight. I like the Bengals, but I don't love the Bengals kind of thing. And I granted, they destroyed the Jets and they almost put a fifty burger on them. Yeah, they're they're gonna be good, but I don't see them being the contending teams in the AFC. They they still have a couple of games that they have to prove to me. Like they have they they have to show that kind of effort against like the Colts and the Broncos and the Patriots for me to jump on ship for that. And even honestly, even against their div- tough division, as granted how down the both teams have been, the Steelers and Ravens, they have to do that in their division. They have ne- they have not proven to us that they they can win in Pittsburgh yet. They they've had their moments. They they've had times where. Andy Tolton becomes a big pumpkin, no pun intended, because of his orange hair. But they have the moments of him flaking out because he's a young quarterback. Um, it should be definitely interesting to see. Definitely interesting to see what Bengals team shows up for the playoffs. I think it'll be a little different for them, considering they should end up with the. Ho- I think they should end up with the home game in the first week of the playoffs. Personally, um, this week should. Be, this week they're showing off again. This week they put the Bengals are in Miami for the Thursday night game. Yeah, they should win that game. Miami is definitely f- falling off the bandwagon. <laughs> I never was on the bandwagon. Uh, they they've completely fallen off the face of the earth. Uh, I have no idea what happened. They they I don't know. They just completely fell off. Um, Tannehill has taken a couple steps back after having a hot start. Um, I, I see the Bengals finding a way to pull that one out. We will talk other football games later on in this show. Um, all right. Giants have eight games left. Mm-hmm. That's the record. Final eight. I say six and two. No, I, I said five and three. No, I, yeah, yeah, five I said and five, and three. five and three. The yeah. games that scare me are... The Packers game. Packers Seahawks. in Washington. Yeah. And Seahawks. Yeah, those games do scare me. Um, the Gi- see that's the thing with the Giants. They can they can go they can go six and two, they can go eight and zero, <laughs> or they can they can completely tank it. That's how the Giants been this year. Um, I could see them going five and three as well. Actually, that's because they're we're gonna we're gonna lose a game to one of the division teams that we have left. The three division games we have left. Um, we only have one ro- road game in the division left, so that's clutch to see. So. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see which Redskins team also shows up from the two games we play them in. So it's it's going to be really interesting with that. Um, I don't see us being the uh, Seahawks because they're just too much of a good team this year. They're going to smack us in the mouth and they're going to 
eight Eli throwing picks, and Eli might have one of the games Eli throws like ten picks, and everybody gets mad kind of game, especially with the Legion of Boom. Yeah, uh, that game scares me a lot. But like I said, also the Packer game. But the Packers we normally play well against. The last couple of games we've found a way to like we play well against the Packers. Hi. That scares me the week against the Packers is the fact that we may be getting them getting healthy. Yeah, that's the one thing. That that, that's the week they may start getting guys back. Yeah, and especially with the Seahawks game, I know it's so far away, but Harvin's going to be back, and that's going to be scary, especially with their running game and being able to go vertical with um, Golden Tate and uh, Sidney Rice as well. Their, their team is going to be complete when they have Harvin. So it's going to be... It's going to be crazy to see what happens with that. Hopefully the Giants are still in the playoff hunt. It's crazy to think that the Giants are two games out of the playoffs right now. And we don't deserve to make the playoffs. I don't know. I'm, I'm just being fair and uh, honest. Um, there, we have a long way to go. Hopefully we find a way to fight back. But we, we no shape or form, deserve to make any shot, uh, any chance of making the playoffs. But... And it would be epic for a team that got start the season 0-6 to find a way to the playoffs. Of course, I'd take it, but we don't deserve it. Not a shot. No, not at 9-6. and six. Unless, unless we finish the season 10-6 and six or... Uh, if, if, we end, if we end the season any lower than 8-8 eight and eight and we find a way to make the playoffs, I don't consider it a positive year unless we find a way to win the playoffs. A uh, one playoff game. But honestly... Either wild card team should beat the crap out of us because they'll probably have ten wins, nine, eight, nine. Uh, they either have nine or ten wins. Just how good the conference is. So it's really disgusting on the part of the NFC East. Yeah, the the division is just awful. So I don't know. Anyhow, we are on a bye week. Uh, bye week, so it's going to be crazy. What are you, do, are you doing? Anything fun this weekend since the Giants? Just bye week for. We're all on bye week. Yeah, probably a lot of NSL red <laughs> red zone. We're all on bye week. That's yeah. the best part. Um, Might go see bad grandpa. I don't know. See it. Yeah. See it. You, you won't regret it. You you talked to Rank. See if he saw it yet. No, I haven't talked to Rank. Yeah, I'm sure he loved it too. He saw it. Uh, all right. Let's <laughs> let's start the talk to segment with uh AJ. Well, first we're gonna play a little Division One Point One. Then we'll come back and we'll talk to AJ about that. Sounds good. Let's play some through it all. S and D podcast is in no way affiliated with, associated with, produced or endorsed by the National Football League or any of its affiliates. Check out Believe in NY, a brand new clothing company started by female sports fans. They carry apparel for all New York sports teams. A clothing company by female fans for all New York sports fans. You can find them on Twitter at NYBelieve or their website at BelieveInNY.com. Welcome back to the SMD Podcast Show on the Schmuck Sports Network, episode 51. Once again, that was Division 1.1. We went through it all. Uh, let's make a couple picks. Let's, let's do our weekly ugly picks. Group of uh, it's an ugly week, so <laughs> bear with us. Uh, the first game we want to do with... Is you asked me before what I'm going to do during bye week. I'm going to get our records. All right, sounds good. We'll get our records so everybody can see them going into this week, of okay, course. of course. Awesome. All right. All right. Uh, first game, might as well start the Thursday night game since that starts the football week. We got the Bengals at Miami. Do we want to start doing this with the spread? Uh, we could do that if you want. Oh, we'll do that next week. We'll do that next week. Okay. Since I didn't study that at all. Okay. Um, all right. I obviously going to go with the Bengals. They're, they're just coming off such a high against the Jets. And the Dolphins have really, really, really not been impressive the last few weeks. And that being said, watch the Dolphins score 40 points against the uh, Bengals and shut me up. But I'm going to go with the Bengals. They're just overall a better team right now. The Dolphins are just in a complete mess right now, turning over the ball way too much, not using their key ride receivers that they picked up in the offseason. And Mike Wallace has been a complete bust so far. Is Actually, he play? He plays, but he doesn't get anything. He's He's been my biggest bust on my fantasy teams. Uh, let's see. I, I I definitely see the Bengals finding a way to win. They have just too much firepower for the Dolphins this year. What do you think with that game? Yeah. Sorry. 
You agree. All right. <laughs> Next game. Let's that, see. That one was just the yikes. All right. Uh, the Cowboys are going to beat the Vikings. No shot, chance of that. Chiefs should beat Buffalo, right? Yeah, they should beat Buffalo, but they've been playing sloppy the last couple of weeks. If the Titans go into St. Louis and win, is that considered an upset? No, it's the other way around. They were, should be the favorites because Kyle Clemens, they they did fight hard against the Seahawks, but that was against the division. Tennessee at three, by the way. Huh? Tennessee at three. Okay, so I, I take that three. Uh, let's see, what else? What else? I'm trying to think of who my upset could be. but I already thought of my upset. The, my upset. All these be, games are upsetting. The upset I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the Steelers beating the Patriots at home. If the Falcons win, that's an upset, right? Uh, at yeah. Carolina, two Tech, and five. Record wise, yes. But realistically, let's be real. Um, I could really throw one out there and take the Bucks in Seattle. That's definitely not happen. And if I, I do that, I'm playing the lotto next week. Yes. Uh, honestly, though, I'm ta- I'm gonna take the Steelers over the Patriots. I'm gonna find a way to do that. That'd be cool if I got the Jets and the Steelers both upsetting the uh, Patriots. That would be pretty cool. And the final game of this week that we will cover is the Bears and Packers. Uh, the Packers should beat the crap out of the Bears because of uh, the quarterback and injury situation. So the Packers are going to find a way to pull it out because of the better quarterbacking. And it's at Lambeau Field. So the Packers are going to win that game outright. What do you think? Who's the quarterback? McNown still. Yikes. All right. Vin, you got to win. Yeah, Packers are definitely gonna win that. What a what a shitty week this week was. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's just a bad week. You can argue the the best game of the week is Ravens Browns. Oh my god! And you're right. <laughs> Sad thing is, you're right. The Ravens need to wake up. I think this weekend might be the week they wake up. Hopefully, Ray Rice gets a lot of a couple of touchdowns because I need him in a bunch of fantasy leagues. Anyway. Yeah, the forty nine. Can if Ray Rice gets touchdowns, can Cameron get touchdowns also? Sure, I need him okay. too. All right, uh, the teams on the bye: the Niners, Broncos, Cardinals, Giants, Jaguars, and Lions. Which congratulations, Jaguar fans! You can't lose this week. Yeah, congratulations. <laughs> to them. You don't have to look at your jerseys. Yeah. Oof. <laughs> um, maybe they left them in London. Maybe. Who knows? I mean, I'm sure actually, they, they didn't really travel to London. No, nah, they, they didn't. So, all right. That's our football for this week. All right, let's change gears to baseball. World Series is going on. It's been a pretty epic one. The Red Sox. Crazy are, stuff. It's crazy stuff. The Red Sox have a 3-2 lead while we're recording on thir- Wednesday night. Uh, might be the first. This is the first game six in Boston since uh, 1918. So it's pretty epic stuff. This is the tickets. It's the hottest ticket in town. It's it's gonna be crazy if Boston wins in Boston, either Game Six or Seven. So it's gonna be awesome seeing in Boston either tonight or do they play tomorrow or do they play Friday. Tomorrow. They play tomorrow. Okay, so either Thursday. Or it's Wednesday or Thursday to clinch it. Okay, and they have a four nothing lead right now, so it's kind of it's kind of looking good for Boston right now. Definitely looking good for Boston right now. So. Uh, good for them. They just definitely deserve it, especially being a such a crappy team last year and barely getting over 65 wins last year. New man, a new manager, and just a whole completely different team. Uh, you got to give them credit for being a, a solid team last this year because they were not a team last year and they were just happy to get Bobby V fired last year. Uh, the Cardinals had another great year once again. One of the flagship teams in the whole Major League Baseball. They're always there. They have solid pitching, which is always always solid. They had Michael Waka, who actually who's a young pitcher who especially he showed up big time in the playoffs which is huge, especially with Wainwright. Um, unfortunately, he has had a rough World Series, but he's actually had a great playoff and a great season overall. Fortunately, his pumpkin uh, turned midnight in the World Series, facing uh, John Lester, who's had a studly playoff and a World Series. Uh, who's your MVP of Boston? Probably. <laughs> really? Probably, yeah, he's batting <laughs> 700 right now. He's batting um, 8 trillion. So Guy hung out with A-Rab before the World yeah, Series. Yeah, so he, he definitely earns it there. Uh, the Knicks are looking good. What's the score? Of the What's the score of the net game? Nets were probably running, but it doesn't matter. It's early. There was the, the first upset of the season in the NBA. What was it? Philly won. Philly beat the Heat. <laughs> oh my God! In the second game of the season. Oh my God! <laughs> that means the the Seventy Sixers are the best team in the league. Uh no, I'm just kidding. Uh, they're probably gonna tank it either way. Um, so early season. I'm excited for the Nets Heat game on Friday night. 
And that's a home opener, so that should be fun. Let's see what happens. The Knicks play on Thursday night against the Bulls in Chicago. So that's going to be a tough game. So thank God the Knicks are taking care of business against the at the moment. So enjoy your sports weekend. Go all the New York sports teams, even the Giants, even though they are on bye week. Don't get arrested. Don't get arrested. <laughs> that's my motto. Uh, that's anyway, the bye week motto. Yeah. Everybody shows up on Monday. Yes, everybody <laughs> shows up Monday, no handcuffs, no ha- no hangovers, just ready to play the Oakland Raiders on Sunday at 1. Complain that it's a Monday like the rest of the world. Yes. They could do that. We'll okay. let them do that one. Yes. By the way, they whip out the white pants next week for oh, the first time. Oh, boy. I know boy. how excited you are for that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all right. Anyway. And all the microwaves come to town next week. Yes, yeah. you play the Raiders. All the microwaves. The gotcha. microwaves and iron boards and... The electronics they wear on. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. I see, I see where you're going. <laughs> anyway, this is our show. I'll see you next week, Steve. Yep. 51 down. Have a good one. Due to some technical difficulties, Andrew from BlueLineStation.com will not be joining us this week on the podcast. Make sure to check out next week, episode 52, where Andrew will be joining us. Also, make sure to check out BlueLineStation.com. Once again, BlueLineStation.com. We do apologize for the technical difficulty.